Today, I would like to teach you how to find the t-intercepts, or aka the x-intercepts, of the following function. c of t will be equal to 2t multiplied by t minus 3 multiplied by t plus 1 squared. So the first thing is what we got to realize is what in the world do they mean by t or in, uh, well, in this case, t-intercepts, but in other terms, it could be x-intercepts. So just pretend you have a function, okay? I don't propose that this function is this at all. What I want to illustrate here is that what the t, t is generally written on the horizontal or x is on the horizontal axis and the y value or aka the c of the function's value, in this case c of t, will be written on the vertical axis. So what the t intercepts will be is it will be the values of the points, okay, specifically the t values of the points uh, where the function crosses the t axis, okay. Now, it turns out that in this picture, you know something unique about these three points. I know I didn't tell you any numbers. I know that. But you still know a value that these three points have in common. Do you know what it is? Take a minute. What do you think? Right. The y value or the function's value is zero. Right? That's what you know. The x value or the t value is something, but you know for a fact that all the points along this horizontal axis... The, the y value or the c of t value must be zero for all of them, okay? For all of them. So in other words, whenever they're asking you to find t-intercepts or uh, x-intercepts or whatever the case is, you have to know that the y value of the function or aka the function's value, in this case c of t, must be equal to zero. That's your guiding principle. Now, plug that in for c of t into this equation, okay? So zero, zero will be equal to 2t multiplied by t minus 3 multiplied by t plus 1 squared. Now, before you start thinking about, okay, where do we go mathematically? Just think about it for a second. Just think about it. Now, how does this right-hand side become 0? That's what I want to know. How does it become 0? Well, the way I like to start thinking about this, and this is, uh, you know, by virtue of doing a lot, a lot of practice problems, I start seeing this side as three unique units. One unit here, one unit here, and one unit there. Now, why do I look at them as unique units? Well, partially because I practice a lot. But secondly, I also understand the basics of math. In other words, if this term could somehow be equal to zero, in other words, if that whole term could be zero somehow, and it can be zero because we have a variable there. So at some point, the t value will be equal to a number that will make this term become zero. I understand that then when this is zero, well, that multiplied by whatever the heck this is, multiplied by whatever the heck this thing is squared will all be zero because anything times zero is going to be zero, right? Precisely. Then I also notice that whatever this term inside of here is, right, if this whole term could be zero somehow at some point in time because there will be some t value uh, in which case we'll make that whole thing inside of the parentheses zero, then I know this whole side's got to go to zero. The whole right-hand side has to be zero, right? It's going to zero multiplied by anything is zero again. Okay, and that would be equal to zero. Same thing as the last case. Okay, if this whole thing inside of that parenthesis, it's like, oh, a square, does that have anything to do with it? I don't know, just think about it. If this is zero in here, do you care if it's squared? It could be to the 10 millionth power. Who cares? Zero to the 10, million, 10 millionth power is still going to be zero. Okay, so that's because understanding the basic just idea of behind the math here, right, allows me to now gain that insight. Now watch, you don't even have to do any algebra to figure this out. Just think about the, just think about the question. What's the value of t that'll make this term that I just circled go to zero? What does t have to be? We were saying two times what has to equal, two times what will equal zero? Right, if t is equal to zero, that will be true. Think about this term. What does t have to be in order for this term to go to zero? Right, t has to be equal to three. And what is this term, uh, excuse me, what does this value for t have to be in order for this term to go to zero? Right, t has to be a negative one. And guess what? You just saw, you're done. It's finished. Problem's over. You found the t values, or aka the x values, that will make that function become zero. And that's what we defined the t intercepts to be, right? The values of t that will make the function or the y value go to zero. You're getting very sleepy. You're getting very sleepy. No, hopefully not. Not while you're watching this video, right? Hopefully I'm getting you amped up 
to do more practice problems. Okay, now those are the answers, but you might say, okay, well, you know, I put that on the test, bud. I don't know if I'm going to get full credit. That's fine. Okay, I'll show you now procedurally how to do it, but you got to think about what you're doing before you write down these steps. Okay, because what I'm going to write down now mathematically is just going to be an illustration of the logic that just went on inside of this problem. Okay, man, this coffee is great today. Oh my God. Wow. Amazing. It's amazing what a little coffee can do, you know? Anyway, what do we got going on here? So what we said is that somehow this term has to equal zero. And if this term equals zero, I know that whole right side is going to zero. And that would give me a value of t, then that would produce zero, right? So in other words, the math here is going to work out to look like this. 2t is equal to zero. Okay, how about the second one? Well, t minus 3, that whole term I want to become zero at some point, so that's the math. And then the third term, t plus 1, I could care less if it's squared, like I mentioned before, set it equal to zero. Now solve, divide this by 2, 0 divided by 2 is going to be zero, so t is equal to zero, that's what you set up here. Do the second one, add 3 on both sides, right, and we realize that t is going to be equal to 3. Yeah, isn't that what we set up here? Yes it is. And now subtract 1 from both sides. And t is equal to now a negative 1. Is that what we said before? Yes. Right? This is now, that, that's the thing. The math just follows the logic. Okay? You got to think about the logic first. Now, if you're like, okay, I still kind of get it, but you know what? I, I'm a visual person. I got to see it. I got to see it to believe it. All right, we'll go to your calculator. Plug it in now. 2x. I got to use x because I can't use t because the calculator doesn't recognize t. So just use x in place for t. So x minus 3 now, close the parenthesis, open the parenthesis, x plus 1, x plus 1, and then square it, okay? Square that last term, just like this. Double check, so 2x, x minus 3, good. Now hit graph. Beauty. I'm going to zoom in actually a little bit on it. I'm going to go zoom, zoom, uh, go to uh, number 2. Ah, zoomed in a little too much, all right. All right, go to zoom standard again, hit zoom 6, all right. I thought I was going to be able to do it, but... This is, we'll have to make this do right now. No big deal. No big deal. Now, tell me, where does this thing cross or touch that T axis? Well, it looks like it's going right through the origin, right? So what's the value of T at the origin? What's the value of X at the origin there? Well, it should be zero. Oh, goody gumdrops. That's what we said. Each one of these tick marks represents one unit. So if I go to the left from zero, one unit, what's the T value at that point? All right, it's going to be negative one. Huh. And then if I go one, two, three units to the right there, basically, what's the T value of that point? Oh, it's going to be three. No kidding. Right? That's, there it is, right? There it is. Now you might say, well, how do I know this? Cro I don't see that. I, maybe, I, maybe, how do I know that it's not, you know, how do I know that that's not uh, 2.9948796243? Right? Well, first of all, we did the algebra and we proved it, okay? So that's one way. But if you wanted to see it, instead of looking at the graph now, go to your table, hit second table, or second graph, basically, to bring up the table. And now just, do I have all the numbers in there? And I do. Okay, so now let's bring that in. What happened? Uno secondo. There we go. Okay. Now, we defined before, so here's the table, okay? We defined before that the x-intercepts will be the locations where the y-value or the function's value is equal to zero. So in other words, if these are the, if these, if I, <laughs> what am I trying to say? If the y-value there is zero, these corresponding x-values will represent the locations on that x-axis where the graph will intersect it, okay? And that's what we said already up here, ladies and gentlemen. So many ways to look at it. Isn't it kind of beautiful? It kind of is. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this video helped you out at all, okay? And uh, if it did, check out some more of our videos because we got a lot of math out there, but we got a lot of physics. We got a lot of chemistry, and we have a lot of other stuff coming out soon. Okay, so please stay tuned. We really, truly want to help you through your classes. We want to make your life a little less stressful, okay? Um, and, and hopefully we're able to do that for you. It would actually, it would be awesome. Let us know, all right? Leave us some comments. We try to get back to most comments if possible. And uh, yeah, we would love to hear from you, all right? So thank you so very much again, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.